Hi, my name is Derek Simonowitz. I play for Team Canada Sitting Volleyball and I've been a member since 2012. My name is Nassif Chowdhury and I'm a member of Team Canada Sitting Volleyball and I've been a member since 2021. Growing up, I played volleyball uh, in elementary school. Uh, that's where I started. I, I both ref, uh, I was an official, I had my certification, I was also a coach. In 2008, I got involved in a motorcycle accident. And then in uh, 2011, I was working with a rehab support worker and he actually found the sport for me. I, I didn't know that the sport actually existed before uh, he was able to find it for me. For me, I've kind of been around volleyball my whole life. I played on my school teams growing up, and then uh, when I got into grade nine high school, I started getting into the Canadian club system, so I started playing out of school on a rep team. My high school team, when I was in grade 11, actually ended up uh, competing in our provincial tournament, OFSA, which is kind of like the mini Olympics for kids in Toronto. A referee kind of came up to me and told me about Parasport when he noticed I had a prosthetic leg playing on that team, and then told me to give it a try, and the next thing you know, I was coming out to local club practices. Next thing I knew I got invited to a camp and uh, they were able to put me on the roster right before the last chance qualifier before uh, Tokyo. Sitting volleyball is the Paralympic version of uh, indoor volleyball. Prior to 2007 there was two versions of Paralympic volleyball. There was standing volleyball where individuals with disabilities would just play essentially with the prosthetics on or, or if they had a disability they didn't require a prosthetic without one obviously. And then it was also sitting volleyball and in 2007 the movement switched specifically just to sitting volleyball because it was more inclusive. Some of the major differences for sitting volleyball versus stand-up volleyball is the court is smaller. So you don't play on a usual court that you would for stand-up volleyball. The net is also lower, so for the men, we actually use a, court, a net that's uh, 1.15 meters off the ground, which is a lot smaller than a stand-up court. And we also have the main rule of being seated on the floor or sitting down. Um, so when you're contacting the ball, you actually cannot lift your butt off the ground. So you have to be sitting down when you're touching the ball at any point. Uh, anyone can play sitting volleyball, whether you have a disability or not. Uh, I feel like you should sit down and, and give it a try. Obviously, if, if you have a, a, some sort of disability, you can play up to international level. Um, if you don't have a disability, that's fine. You can play up to the national level. Here in the US, you can play at nationals. I think everyone should give it a try. I think it's a fun sport. Through the Adaptive Sport and Inclusive Recreation Initiative, you can learn how to play adaptive sport, including sitting volleyball. Uh, the basic things that you would need to play sitting volleyball is uh, a flat area. Uh, if you can tape down the lines, great. If not, that's okay too. You can use cones possibly. But the, the major things that you would need would be a volleyball and a net. You can modify a, an indoor net to lower it to be up to a meter 15 for men. It's a meter five for women. Um, if you don't have a net, that's fine. You can use a rope. You can use uh, safety tape, uh, caution tape. Um, you, can use, you can use duct tape if you needed to. But yeah, very minimal equipment, just a ball, a net, and a flat space. The major thing that I tell people when they're about to try the sport for the first time is uh, have your hands up. The sport's really fast. If you're playing with someone that's maybe a little higher level than you and, and they go to attack a ball and your hands are down here and, and you're not ready to play a ball, you, <laughs> you might get hit with a ball that you're not expecting. Have an open mind, have fun, and, and don't get too frustrated with, with not being able to, to move to the ball the first couple of times. That's definitely something that takes a little bit of time to, to get accustomed to. And yeah, once the movement comes, everyone has a great time. Sitting volleyball is played uh, six on six with one team introducing the ball with a serve. Once that ball comes over the net, then the other team, the receiving team, has up to three contacts to put the ball over the net. They can put it over on one, two, or three. Uh, play continues back and forth until the ball hits the ground. At that point, the play is called dead and one team or the other receives the point. The objective of sitting volleyball and how you win a game is really whoever gets to 25 first in each set. If a team's able to get to 25 three times in a game, you automatically win the game. If you win two, the other team wins two, you have to play a fifth to decide who gets that last game, and that last game will only go up to 15 points and not the usual 25. So some of the basic rules of sitting volleyball. Part of our torso has to be on the ground, so anywhere from our shoulders to our bum has to be touching the ground when we actually make a play on the ball. When uh, people are first starting out, their tendency a lot of times is to get up on their knees when they see the ball coming so that they can attack and get a little higher. We call this a lift. The, the call for it is this. It's like a crocodile shape with your hands. 
Some other rules include your butt being behind the line. So if you're serving, it's not that your whole body needs to be behind the line, just your butt, your legs can be over the line. That's totally fine. So same thing when you're blocking, your butt can, has to be before the net, but your legs can go under and even on the opponent's side when you're blocking. And some other violations are similar to indoor volleyball, uh, ball handling errors. So um, if we set from too low, that's called a carry for us. And then uh, a double contact violation where the ball touches two parts of your body before it comes out. Um, that's also called um, a double violation. There's also some rotational, um, some rotational uh, faults as well that can happen. We rotate after a point is scored by our team and the other team was serving prior to that. So uh, team A serves, uh, team B gets the point, then the serve goes over to team B and that is when team B would rotate. Usually when there's a violation, the point will be over and it'll be the point will be awarded to the team that did not commit the violation. Some of the basic skills and movements that one would learn would be, we will we'll go over serving, passing, setting, attacking. And then the biggest thing is just the movement on the ground. So we would go over teaching you how to, how to move forward, how to move backwards, how to move side to side. Some basic movements that you kind of use around setting volleyball that personally I use as well. You know, one move is a crab walk. So like kind of like the backwards back pedal to move around. So if you're trying to get a ball that's behind you, you'll kind of stick both your legs out and you'll kind of take a push back. Uh, sometimes you'll be seated in like a 90-90 position where both legs are bent and you're gonna have both your, both your knees at a 90 degree angle. It's a lot easier for moving around, but also it positions your hip really nicely at the net. Also, sometimes we'll do a sitting with your legs out just so you can move side to side a little bit better. Have your hands on the floor as well. Just like Derek said, it's a para sport, so we use our hands and our legs to move actually. We're gonna have everyone go from the baseline where they are, up to the net, touch the net, and then push back towards the baseline. Ideally, the easiest way to move forward would be to have your two heels in front of you, your hands beside and pushing through, and then backwards, yeah, same thing, just backwards, making sure that we push on the way. All right, let's try going forwards. Go. Yeah, nice. And then backwards, nice. Uh, we're gonna play tag. So if you go outside of these boundaries while someone is chasing you, you become it. And we'll just play for a few minutes just so you guys can get the, the movements down. So you're here, hands down. As soon as you see that contact with the ball, you start moving in. I go left hand, because I'm left-handed, on top, curve with my thumbs down, build that platform, and then push it a little bit. So you have space in your body out here. Whenever hands on the ground, in case, so we want to make sure we're getting to the ball the right spot, so if the ball's slightly off the net, our hands are down, so if we need to adjust slightly, we can go here. Just slightly, we can go here. And then once we're here, we're in the right spot, we wanna make sure that the ball is gonna land on your forehead. So you wanna make sure you're getting under the ball, making that nice little diamond with your fingers. You don't wanna connect, but you wanna make sure that you get around the ball, spreading your fingers. Catch it on your forehead, and once you do, you wanna do a really, have really fast hands and quickly release outside. So the ball's coming, I'm gonna meet it, I'm gonna pass it out, just like that. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is gonna do some forearm passing and some overhead passing variations. We're using the wall when you're by yourself uh, and you wanna get some extra practice in. We're gonna, we're gonna start off with overhead. So for the overhead, we're gonna do the overhead set and we're gonna try and hit this spot 10 times. So once we hit the first spot, we're gonna try and go to the high one now. So we're gonna try and go to the, we just did the low, we're gonna go to the high. Try your best to hit the high. 10 times. Now once you hit the top one 10 times, you hit the bottom one 10 times, now you're gonna try an alternate pattern. So we're gonna try and go low, high, low, high, low, high. Make sure you're focusing on getting the ball in your forehead, also having fast hands. So it's not a throw, kind of like this, not like that. You wanna make sure you're having fast hands, catch it on your forehead. Now you're gonna do the same thing with your forearm pass. So we're gonna make sure that we're gonna start off with you might need a little bit more space when you're doing your forearm pass. So make sure that you're hitting that spot and you're going low, just like that. Now the forearm pass is a lot trickier. Make sure you angle your forearm pass as well as you can. Make sure you do the high one. Uh, one partner is going to be at the net. One partner is going to be on the baseline on each side. Can we please split up? 
You're gonna have your fingers open and spread as wide as possible, pretty much. And you're gonna create a diamond or a triangle shape. And you're gonna look through that diamond or through that triangle when you're catching the ball. So as the ball's coming up, you're gonna look through that triangle and then you're gonna catch the ball with bent elbows and then you're gonna send it back out um, towards your partner while looking through that diamond. Nice, nice, okay. So what we're gonna do now is the same drill we started with, with the overhead. Our partner at the net is gonna have the ball. They're gonna to toss to the partner in the back and the partner in the back is just gonna forearm pass back, okay? So I like putting my hands down, so I'm ready to pull, but I'm gonna push with my dominant, so my left hand, my left hand and my left leg are gonna be in sync. So my left leg, because I'm left-handed, is gonna be the one that's back here. I'm gonna use it to push myself towards the net. So my hands here, ready to go, and then as soon as I'm here, I'm gonna push, I'm gonna swing. So I'm gonna have my hands ready, ready to go, to pull myself while I'm pushing my legs. I'm gonna push, then once I'm here, I'm gonna have my elbow ready to go up. I'm gonna spike and swing through. And you wanna make sure that you're not going here when you're spiking, you wanna make sure you have a little, little of a distance from the net, because there's gonna be a blocker in front of you in a real game. going to do now is I'm going to set a ball to Nassif and he's going to spike a couple. He's going to demonstrate what it looks like and then we're going to go into a hitting line where I'll introduce the ball to Nassif. He'll set it to you guys and you guys will all spike from the left side. So I'm going to pass the ball to Nassif. He's going to uh, pass it to me and then I'm going to set him and then he's going to spike. Okay. So what I'm going to have everyone do now is just line up in one line. Everyone uh, grab a ball and then line up over here. So uh, when starting our approach, we wanna be in front of this orange line because we don't need to move six feet. We just want you to move the distance of uh, your, essentially like your heels to your bum. That's how far you move, right? So you only move like a couple of feet at most. Good job. So if I'm right-handed, I would face the right side. If I'm left-handed, I would face straight left side. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the ball with my hand and I'm not gonna throw the ball. I'm gonna try to hit it straight out of my hand. I'm gonna make a fist with the other hand and I'm gonna try to hit it right here. So as I come through and I swing through, nice and strong with a strong hand, the ball comes up high and it goes into the court on that side. That's the easiest way to serve the ball. If you are new to the game, just a sideways facing underhand serve. Once you get more advanced, you can sit forward if you want it to still underhand serve. And then the next progression obviously would be an overhand serve. The moment that we toss the ball in the air, when it goes above our shoulders, we have to hit it. We can't let it back, come back to the ground and drop and take a redo. Our bum dictates where we are on the court. So right now my legs in the court, that's absolutely okay. That doesn't matter. So when I'm doing an overhand serve, it's similar to an attack. I wanna bring my elbow back and I wanna come forward. When I'm doing a float serve, I wanna have a nice strong hand. Um, fingers together and I want to hit it with the palm of my hand straight on the face of the ball and I want to come through with nice strong power and almost stop after contact. So this is what a float serve would look like. So what we're going to do now is we're going to split up to two, uh, not two teams, but like half of you on that side on the baseline and half of you on this side on the baseline and we're just going to serve back and forth so that you guys can get the, the feel of serving. It can hit the net as long as it goes over, it's fine. 